Okay, that's good to know. But ladies and gentlemen, Michael Moriarty, the managing director, Hasbro Far East, senior vice president of global, global sourcing um, at a rather, rather small company, Hasbro. Now, I want to say, you could almost, where's Emmanuel? Emmanuel, this guy could be, he could be a rugby prop forward. Have you, have you played American? I played, I played American football. You played American did, football. Yes. Okay. Hmm. I need to come and I need to talk to you about <laughs> coming and playing on my rugby team. Oh. Um, but you're going to share with us um, quality safety legislation and guidelines, how they force manufacturing for change. Yes. Okay. We're All gonna, right. Thank we're going to look forward to that. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank um, the French Chamber. Uh, obviously, and on behalf of the French Chamber, it's great to know that we also have invited Americans to, to speak. Yes, thank you. Yes, and I wore my Donald Trump, Trump tie for everyone today. I didn't want to be confused for not being American. Okay, well, we're yeah? going to talk about that, and, and we've got some questions about fake I know. news I know. later on. I know. So no fake news today. And, and by the way, what's your Twitter handle? Donald, the real Donald J. Trump. The real yeah. Donald J. Trump. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, well, things I'd like to forget about, things I'd like to talk about today. I'm really excited to be here, so thank you very much uh, for the warm welcome and introduction. Uh, as you said, I'm uh, Michael Moriarty, proud to be on the Hasbro team. If you're not familiar with Hasbro, uh, we have a lot of our own brands like Transformers, My Little Pony, Play-Doh, Monopoly, et cetera, Nerf. Um, we also have great partner brands that you might be familiar with, Star Wars, uh, Disney Princess, and Marvel, uh, that we uh, manufacture and sell around the world. In fact, we like to call ourselves a global entertainment and play company. And what I do really here in Hong Kong is head up the global hub where we aspire really to develop and manufacture everywhere. Right now we have nine different manufacturing bases around the world. Uh, where all of our X Factory is done, uh, and it's all managed centrally here out of Hong Kong. Of course, China is a very big piece of that. Making toys is really a privilege, and making sure that you take quality uh, and safety seriously is an important part of what we do. In fact, we don't say that quality and safety is a priority in compliance. We say it's a precondition to, e to every priority. Um, and we're honored to be recognized as being a leader, not just uh, in, in the world, not just in terms of quality and safety, but also corporate social responsibility, uh, sustainability, and an engaged workforce. So I was, uh, I was asked to speak a little bit about quality and safety legislation guidelines and how they've forced manufacturing to change. And, and there is a little bit going on, but I'd also like to bring up a much larger question about who really is making the change. And so we'll talk about a couple points there. So how are they, uh, how is uh, legislation managing change this day? Well, first of all, as you know, the world is getting smaller and it's forcing manufacturers to get bigger. Edwin showed the picture of the gigantic uh, sumo wrestler. We have a lot of our manufacturing partners who are like that increasingly seeing global requirements and standards at the lowest common denominator, right? So we're getting a lot of consolidation of standards. You're seeing pockets of compliance protectionism, as in the case of India, certainly in the toy industry for quality standards. But by and large, what you're seeing is standards coming together. But if one country has 10, another has 10, all of a sudden we have a global standard with 20. And so, uh, that's making things hard. But what are we seeing as a result of it? Certainly consolidation is happening because in order to be compliant, to drive all of these things, you need scale. Scale is driving consolidation. That's one of the things that's happening. The second thing that's happening is transparency. A lot of the standards that are coming out right now are just about providing more information. Certainly helps on traceability and understanding what's happening uh, down the supply chain. Um, if you remember back, you know, gladly Hasbro um, was not cut up in this, but in 2008 there was a lead paint epidemic really in the toy industry, and not just one supplier but a lot of our peers, and it really was about traceability and a lack of transparency. And so 
a lot of the things that are happening right now are generally pretty good, right, from a legislative standpoint. Um, I say generally. Um, you know, it's not exactly applying, you know, a lean format in, as they think about adding, uh, you know, new standards. But what we're seeing is that, you know, for those who are compliant, they're getting bigger, driving down costs, uh, and they're able to provide more transparency and compliance. Now, that's not the whole story, though. You know, the question really we should be asking, is it legislation that's really forcing manufacturing to change? Sure. That's happening, but what is really happening right now? And so if it's not legislators doing it, who is? Well, one thing. First of all, technology. Um, <laughs> it's here to stay. A couple uh, big things. 10% of all retail is done online, and it's the segment that's growing. Last year, it grew 15%. Cybersecurity investments are, uh, incidents are increasing. Investments are growing up. I didn't know this, but... Uh, for average Fortune 500 company spends $12 million a year on cybersecurity. Um, AI, 21 years until the AI singularity. Who knows what that is? It's when computers are smarter than people, generally speaking. That's the simple definition. So do you think we're ready for that? How can we legislate that, right? Um, flying cars. Who read Popular Mechanics as a child? I did. And they had the picture of the flying car. I knew that when I turned 16, which was a long time ago, that I was going to be able to fly a car. Well, they say we're going to have it in 10 years, so for real this time. I hope so. Um, but the other uh, piece is government readiness. I was reading the, um, the reports that came out of um, um, Davos, and the World Economic Forum said, and they said this with all seriousness. They said, hey, listen, guys, e-commerce is here to stay. <laughs> well, thanks for that, right? Um, so we, we're in a situation right now where um, it's happening so fast, and we're really not ready for it. The legislative uh, bodies um, aren't really able to tackle it. A couple of examples you might be familiar with. Self-driving cars. Are we really there yet? Um, it's forcing, technology is forcing the legislators to ask questions that they haven't had to ask in the past. You look again, <coughs> an article just even here in Hong Kong. How do we deal with drones? How do we think about e-payments? And how can we do it, and this is a real question, how can we do it without disrupting innovation? Even the government and militaries are trying to figure out how to deal with new standards with the change in pace of technology. Now, it's not that technology hasn't been here forever and it's not always been driving changes in legislation. It's the speed. I'm sure you all can agree that it's never happened this fast in our career, that we see these changes coming. <coughs> in fact, in this study done by North Carolina State, they said the four, the top uh, ten risks, number four is that the speed and pace of technology and change is going to drive constricting legislation, right? Almost like a knee-jerk reaction to what's going on. It'll be interesting to see the legislation that comes out for self-driving cars. Um, and, and will that really help it move forward or will it pull it back because we just don't know. Things are happening too fast. Okay. So I'm just a humble toy maker, but think about the problems that I have right now as I think about building a drone that can tar target young children and shoot darts at them, right? <laughs> it's a little, bit, a little bit challenging in a regulatory environment where the solution doesn't exist, and you almost have to create it yourself. So who is pushing the change? Technology is a big piece of it, but the consumer has never been more powerful than it, has, than it is today. And a couple examples. First of all, consumers say no. I bring this up as an example. Sure, it's a competitor, but I like this idea and I like this product. The privacy, uh, personal privacy laws haven't been addressed on products like Amazon's Alexa. And so an application that's built for kids, the consumers are saying no before the legislators have a chance to consider it, right? Now, the consumers also say yes. And I want to show you a quick video of, of something and kind of take you through a story about how the consumer is saying yes has changed manufacturing a little bit. So bear with me if you've got a minute. Well, first of all, who knows pie face? Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mensch. So I love that. The consumer says yes. Now, I'm going to keep it playing because he kicks his grandfather. Here in a little bit. So the consumer says yes, right? So what do you think happened to sales right after that? Instantaneous demand uh, for us on this, right? And the beauty of it, uh, and so that impacts the manufacturing. Um, much more volatility depending on how demand is created. We have other great examples where we have partnerships with Dude Perfect to help um, promote and try and trial on, on uh, YouTube our Nerf products. But the consumers continue to say yes. I love this. Um, they take the product, they post their own stories online and, uh, and continue to um, promote uh, the, the brand themselves. We don't have to do anything uh, for that. Um, and so I just love it. Um, and if you don't notice, that is that's your teeth that come out. It's a fantastic video. But, but here's what's great. So how's it impacting manufacturing? So we talked a little bit about how they were introduced to this product online from a marketing standpoint. But when we are selling this product um, you know, through Amazon or uh, Taobao, what we're finding is that the customer reviews that we get online are much more valuable than we had been getting in the past from the traditional um, uh, uh, customer care channels. Typically, when someone calls with uh, your care company, they call with a complaint and they're not really happy. But what we're hearing is, um, hey, you know, listen, the, it was really good, but the, the, um, the cream kind of slipped off to the side. And so we made a real-time adjustment to the camber of the hand so it held the cream dinner there better. We wouldn't have had that information through the traditional uh, channels. The other thing is we get inspiration from a lot of these comments, and we had new product ideas for how to extend it. You saw the showdown in the, one of the videos, but we have one coming out. You can buy it for $11.99 retail at your favorite <laughs> But you have pie face cannon. There's a cannon that shoots cream at you. So, and that was actually an idea that came uh, from a customer review. Um, so uh, technology is really impacting uh, uh, the entire experience in, in, in a lot of good ways. Now, the fact is we're living in an omni-channel world. The online, we shared they had the big uh, sumo wrestler earlier. The 800-pound gorilla right now in retail is online. They aren't our biggest customer, the online channel. It's not our biggest. It's certainly the fastest growing around the world. But when we talk to our brick and mortar customers around the world, they stopped asking about their peer group. They're only asking what the online players are doing right now. So it really is driving everything that's going on. The challenge that we have from a manufacturing standpoint is this notion of cross-border online sales. How many are familiar with cross-border sales? The problem that we have is that with differing standards, we're not yet on global standards everywhere, with different standards around the world, what might be compliant here where you shipped it might not be compliant where it's ultimately sold. And as the brand or the consumer or the manufacturer, you are the accountable body for that. And so it's almost like the old retail channels um, that existed before um, are no longer our partner in that because things have changed. And so that's, that's something that's happening. It's pushing the work of compliance down onto us uh, even more. The other is the notion of a third party platform. Now these are fantastic. So this is Amazon has their own warehouses, they buy products, things like that. But then they also open up the functionality of e-commerce and someone could drop ship directly using Amazon. Now the challenge that we have right now is that that legislation really hasn't addressed it properly and it's more than ever it has opened up another channel for less compliant companies to come in. And so you see a situation right now where the legislation really hasn't been able to keep up and there's risk from self-driving cars to the retail channels to uh, in 10 years flying cars. Now, it doesn't stop there. The world of social compliance is also a big part of what's going on. 
China Labor Watch, just as one example, um, taking a look at um, the toy industry in January, uh, they had over 17, uh, almost 18 million hits on their article, right? So you combine that with the mindset of the millennial consumer, who as Edwin so you know, properly uh, noted, they need purpose in their purchases. So you have increased transparency on the social compliance front and a consumer who cares about it, you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. And the burden is on us, us in this room, to, to deal with a lot of these things before legislation is coming, because right? it's hard to keep up. And that's, that's what we're noticing in the toy industry. So final words, the world's getting smaller. It's consolidating. Standards are coming together. There's a lot more scale. Technology advancing quickly, maybe even too quickly. The consumer has been democratized. That is happening. And even with all the great regulation and the help that it's providing, still might not be enough right now. So thank you for your time. I really do appreciate the opportunity. And um, uh, happy to take any questions if there are.